Okay, that's bullshit too. All right. So, okay, so for instance, you know, you love to play video games, right? Okay, but you want to start a video game company. But no one gives a shit you're a level 500 elf, okay? Guarantee. All right? You're a fat, bearded old man who loves 1990s magical girl Japanese animation, right? And you want to start a costume company, all right? Yeah, I don't think it's going to work, guys. Okay, your name is DJ Mozart, all right? And you're really surprised you're not getting any gigs for your classical music passion. You live in a retirement community, but you love hip hop. And so you want to open a hip hop clothing store. Guess what? It's not going to work. Finally, you're in love with skiing, okay? And you want to open a ski shop, but you live in Hawaii. Yeah, it's not going to work, okay? No, your potential customers are selfish. Getting them to open up their wallets is going to be the hardest thing you ever have to do. Okay, you know why? They want to know what's in it for them. So they don't really give a shit that you're bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, and you really, I really love what I'm doing. I'm so passionate about it. No, they really don't care. Okay, so saying that now, how do you start a business? Does anyone know how they start a business? Anybody? Come on, come on. Wait. Find clients. Okay, what else? Got anything else? Come on, you guys run businesses, right? How the hell did you start them? Incorporate. Smart ass. <laughs> All right. All right. This is how you start a business, guys. You solve a problem or find a need in the marketplace, okay? What assets are you bringing? What is the value proposition? We're choosing purpose, not passion. No one gives a shit about passion, all right? So let's go, some, some, uh, let's go over some companies uh, that chose purpose and not passion. Does anyone know who this is? Shut up, Robin. Who is this? Zappos founder, Tony Shea. Anyone in e-commerce? Okay, do you buy things off the internet? Nope. All right, good, okay. So Tony Shea, do you really think Tony Shea gave a shit about women's shoes? No, he didn't, okay? What about this guy? Who's this guy, come on. Good job, all right. Do you think this guy loves people? Probably not. And then what about myself, okay? Do you really think I love numbers, accounting, and uh, fulfillment and warehousing? No, guys, I'm not passionate about that stuff. But I became passionate about that stuff. This is what you're gonna have to love when you open up a company, all right? 15 hour days, all right? Accounting and numbers, not knowing what the hell you're doing, but figuring it out. So when everyone's out there on a sunny day drinking beers, you're gonna be home or in your office working your ass off. You're gonna also have no vacations, you're not gonna see your family, you're not gonna eat right, you're gonna be eating crap like Coke and cookies and candy and all that stuff. And you're not gonna shower, you're gonna smell, and you're probably not gonna have sex, okay? So what do you have to love? You've got to love working hard every second of it. You've got to love the things you hate because you have to be passionate about loving your business. Okay, so how do you love your business? All right, here's some tips on how you start to love your business or how you become to love your business. One of the first things is being contrarian, okay? Now what does this mean? Is this some more bullshit jargon that people throw around these days? Maybe, but it's not this romantic anarchy, being contrarian, no, not at all. What it is, it's about challenging yourself so you change, all right? Because being uncomfortable, all right, helps you grow as a person. You're not gonna be the same person you were today as you were yesterday. You shouldn't be. If you are, something is wrong. You're not growing and changing, all right? Because just like you, just like people, your business is going to grow and it's going to change. You've got to be ready for it. You're going to have to be ready for all this uncomfortable shit that's going to get thrown at you. Things you don't want to do. Things you can't do. All right? Things you don't want to do. You know, you run out of money. You can't get money. Okay? Somebody quits. You can't find the right people. These are the things that are going to be, get thrown at you constantly. You've got to be malleable to this. And you need to be ready because guess what? When you're ready and you're training yourself to be contrarian, 
all these things that are gonna get thrown at you, you're gonna be able to take care of. Be malleable because business is malleable. So here's this guy, all right? And he's a big nerd, right? We get it, all right? So the thing about being contrarian is when you do things that you normally don't choose to do, the rewards are that much sweeter. So this guy stays home on a Friday night and he goes and he tries to level up his 500 elf to a 502. Do you think that's gonna give him as much satisfaction as, unless he go, or, or, um, excuse me, as much satisfaction if instead he goes to the club and talks to this girl and gets her phone number? Okay, what do you think? I mean, leveling up your, your elf from a 500 to a two is something you always do. It's something you're good at. Who gives a shit if you're good at it? Big deal, it's easy. It's not a challenge. It's not helping you grow. It's just helping you pat yourself on the back, okay? This guy is gonna be happy if he gets this girl's number because you know what? It's not something he usually does. And if he wins at it, he's gonna feel that much better. So. Being contrarian helps you to think outside the box because in business you're gonna be trying to survive, you're gonna be trying to be the best and you've got to learn to think outside the box. Start with yourself. So what do we do to train ourselves to be contrarian, all right? We do things we hate, do things you can't do, or do things you don't wanna do. So for instance, you don't like accounting, like me, clearly there's a common, <laughs> Take an accounting course, that's what I did, okay? You don't like people? Take an acting course, all right? Are you scared of the water? It doesn't even just apply to business. Are you scared of the water? Learn how to dive, okay? You scared of flying? Learn how to skydive, all right? You're, you're in fact, in, in dating, you can take the same approach as well. Say you date a certain type of guy, all the, or a certain type of girl, sorry. A certain type of girl all the time. You know, you only like really, really super intelligent girls, right? Or girls with big boobs, all right? Whatever, that's more realistic, right guys? Okay, try dating a girl with small boobs, you know? Just do things that you normally don't do. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna play a game. It's called Name That Company, all right? These are companies, sorry. These are companies that are, were contrarian. They took the normal business models and they turned them on their heads and they were very successful doing it. So the first one we have, who the hell would pay $4 for a cup of coffee when you can get it in your office for free? Who, what company is that? Starbucks. Okay, you guys are brilliant. Okay, next company, $2, sorry, two euros, two quid, whatever, $2 for a bottle of water that you can get home for free. Who, would, who the hell would pay for that? What company? Just pick. Avion, oh boy, right over there, okay. All right, next company. Is it a disgusting idea for you to go stay in a dirty stranger's home that is sick or have some dirt bag come stay in my house? That's gross, right? But what company is this? Yep. Okay, next one. I'm a nerdy, socially inept engineer, borderline Asperger's. How the hell can I create a social network? <laughs> Touche, good one. Yes, MySpace. All right, guys, so stop being comfortable, all right? Next, let's talk about being a dick, all right? This is really, really important. Don't be a dick, all right? You be nice, and you will attract nice people. Be a good person. Good people will flock to you. So right now, we're going to take a dick test. That's Keep your pants on, please, Jesus. <laughs> okay, how to be a dick test. We're gonna go through ways people are dicks. And I want you to sit there, what's up, dicks. Perfect timing. <laughs> um, we're gonna go, we're gonna run through. <laughs> you got that on tape, right? That's great. Okay, we're gonna run through a bunch of ways people are dicks. And I want you guys to keep a track track of this and see if you're guilty of being a dick. Okay, the first one is name dropping out of context. Does anybody do that? Do you raise your hand? Oh, yes, I was playing golf with Tom Cruise the other day. Anybody do something like that? I know not Tom Cruise, but in the tech industry. Robin, do you ever do that? No. Oh, that's right. Okay, so no one does this. Next one, avoiding eye contact. Who does this? You do, really? You're looking at me now. 
All right, no, I guarantee she's not the only one who does this. I'm in the tech industry, and you know, I'm in the minority because I'm a woman. Yay. And a lot of the guys, they sit there, and they're talking to you, and they won't look at you. All right? I'm not saying they're looking at somewhere else. No, they just won't look at you. And it's not because you're being a dick, actually. It's because you might be intimidated. You don't come across a lot of women in person. Uh, things like that, OK? I'm telling you right now, the way I feel when you don't look at me when you're speaking to me, I feel like you know, you're disrespecting me. I feel like, what, what, what's wrong with me? Do I have a zit? Do I, does my breast smell? You make me feel uncomfortable, so make this a very important point in your life. Always make eye contact. It's really just a simple, nice way to not be a dick. Okay, next one. Texting while talking or listening to someone. Who's doing that right now? Who does that? Shut the hell up. All you raise your fucking hands. All of you do it all the time, okay? Especially at dinner, okay? If you're having a dinner, a business dinner. Didn't we do that in um, Berlin, right? It was a bunch of us at dinner, and what we did is we all took our iPhones and we put them in a stack on the table. Whoever touched it had to pay for dinner. And I got news for you guys, this dinner was not cheap, okay? But no one touched it. Okay, you guys should practice that. It's rude, it's not cool, all right? I should be the most important thing in the room. Even if I'm not, make believe, all right? Next one. Who's Next one, you guys keeping score of uh, your dick points? <laughs> Having a big dick is not a problem, okay? All right. Arriving, <laughs> arriving late and not apologizing. I actually arrive late a lot of the times, but I do apologize for it. That's another one. Who's guilty of this? Anybody? Oh, God, you guys aren't angels. Let's go. All right, using condescending words. Who's guilty? Really? Just the two of you? OK. So I'm guilty of this, too. And what, unfortunately, this happens, and you don't mean it sometimes, just try to check yourself. All right? If it comes out of your mouth, apologize. All right? Next one, interrupting conversations. Who does this? I do this. I do this. Come on, we all do this. You think you're smarter. You think you're, what you have to say is more important. To be quite honest, People really want to hear themselves talk a lot of the times. I mean, I'm having a great time up here right now hearing myself talk, so, and no one's interrupting me, which is fantastic. Okay, next one. Having an answer for everything. Who does this? Keep on, who else, anybody? Yeah, no one gives a shit what you know, okay? I got news for you, all right? Be humble, okay? Even if you do know things, let the other person talk. See what they know, because if you shut up, you might learn something from them, OK? All right, next. Speaking ill of others in competition or competition. So especially when you're networking and in the scene, you don't know who knows the other per You don't know who knows who, all right? The best rule to default to is just don't talk shit, OK? Don't say anything bad. And also, don't say anything bad about your competition. It makes you look petty and it makes you look like a dick, all right? Finally, blaming others. Who does this? This, this is true for relationships, too. Who, who blames their spouse or partner? Be like, it's your fault, right? Who does that? Come on, there's like three of you guys are like freaking angels in here, come on. All right, so blaming others. This is, oh wait, it's not even up there, okay. Blaming others, yes. Um, what does this do? It means, I mean, it, al it always takes two people two people, so it's definitely not just their fault. It's your fault, too. Okay, so how many people got more than five dick points? Have you guys been keeping track? You got more than five dick points? I'm gonna talk to you after this, okay? All right, so being a dick, why? Because there's a fine line between arrogance and confidence, all right? Let's try to be the latter. Next, burning bridges, okay? Who in my life, when I was first starting out, uh, out my company, where are the people that were dicks to me? Do you know where they are? The people that were dicks to me when I started my company? I don't know where the fuck they are either, and I don't care. So that's the whole thing. Don't burn any bridges because you never know down the line when you're gonna need those people, okay? So in Japan, uh, the Japanese culture 
follows this word. It's called Enryo. It's a big part of the Japanese culture. So the first character is To. It means distance. And the second character is Omonpaka, okay? Which means consideration. What this word means is to always be humble, be reserved, and not impose yourself upon other people. The Japanese people, and myself, well, I try, live their lives this way. Everything you do, you do not to hurt another person around you. Finally, the flip side of all this is people really deserve a second chance. You know, I have a bad day sometimes. I can be a dick. You guys definitely can be dicks too. And you might meet that person for the first time and they are having a bad day. So it's really important to give people second chances because you never know. I've actually done it before where I'm like, oh, that guy's such a dick, right? I don't want to talk to him anymore. But then I'll give him a second chance and he turns out to be one of my best friends. So that's also important. Here's an example of a company that was a really big dick, all right? And they got their just desserts. So everybody know Fiji bottled water? Does everybody know it? No? It's like an avian. So exactly, you don't know them. Why don't you know them? Because they ran this campaign. Fiji, because it's not bottled in Cleveland. Cleveland is a city in Ohio in the Midwest, United States. So Cleveland got really pissed. Cleveland was like, hey dudes, wh what do we do to you? Why are you being such dicks? Why are you saying our, our water sucks, right? And what they did was they went ahead and uh, they tested Fiji water. And these tests came back with 6.31 micrograms of arsenic poisoning. So in fact, the city of Cleveland's water was cleaner and healthier for you than Fiji water. All right, so, you know, because these guys were dicks, the city of Cleveland publicized this. And they were like, hey, sorry, you guys are being dicks. So what happened was Fiji actually had a huge backlash lost market share, and had to lay off a bunch of people just because they were being dicks. Okay, so next what we're gonna talk about is learning. Don't stop learning, all right? And how do you not stop learning? This is how. You listen to others. Shut up. Shut the fuck up, okay? If you listen to other people, it trains you to also listen to yourself because that's important as well. It trains you to have patience. This is what the Japanese do all the time. Because at the end of the day, you know nothing, okay? I don't know anything, all right? If you shut up, stop, and listen, you might learn something. So what else do we do? <clears throat> We've got to find people who make you want to be a better person. All right, so for instance, it's easy to find people that are just like you, that are similar, right? That have the same tastes or whatnot, right? That's the easy part. Or like date someone like that. But that's boring, okay? And it doesn't help you grow as a person. Um, you wanna look for people who are completely opposite of you and have possessed skills that you need and you want, all right? Because they're gonna make you strive and work hard to be a better person. What if you can't code or something? Find a programmer friend. Not ask him to do your homework or ask him to code for you, but if you make friends with people who possess skills you do not have, it makes you want to learn them, actually. It makes you want to impress your friend. So, next thing. Well, how do you find these people? You've got to learn how to network, guys, and this goes back to not being a dick, all right? Don't be a dick and people will flock to you. I guarantee it. Get out there, okay? If you're worried about being a burden on mentors when you find a mentor, don't worry. People love to be needed. I love when people ask me questions. It makes me feel needed and wanted and smart and funny and beautiful and awesome. Wait, sorry. <laughs> okay? So, mentors. Let's talk about those. How many of you guys have a mentor? Several mentors. How many? Wait, who's not raising their hand? Dicks. <laughs> Dicks. Okay. How many of those mentors are your moms or your dads? Anybody? Good, good, good. Because one of the mentors you should have are your parents. Because shit's going to get deep, guys. And when everyone else hates you, mom and dad won't. 
Mom and dad will help you build your confidence for sure, definitely. I mean, my mom, she's awesome, okay? Let me tell you a little bit <clears throat> about my mom. Um, my mom uh, owned three businesses. She started by herself. Um, and that was after she was working for Rolling Stones magazine, okay? My mom's pretty goddamn cool. But at the end of the day, when I'm doing my business, my mom's my mom. If I say, hey, mom, I came up with this business plan that um, I want to kill 50 kids on a bus, my mother will respond, those little bastards deserve it. Go kill them, baby, <laughs> okay? So you want to have other mentors besides your parents, okay? <laughs> and this is why. They give you honest feedback, okay? The mentors in my life, what do they do for me? They tell me I'm not crazy, okay? And then sometimes they tell me I'm fucking crazy, all right? So what do I look for in a mentor? All right, there's several things. Smarter than me, okay? And that's not hard, guys. I don't care how smart you think you are. Everyone in the room is going to be smarter than you, okay? Um, I look for people who know something I don't or have experiences I don't because I want to challenge myself and learn <coughs> from other people. And then, of course, we know people who aren't dicks. I hate dicks. You over there, you won't be my mentor, will you? Finally, I like to look for people who are rich. That's just my personal preference, so. Finally, <laughs> all right, next, we're going to talk about failing. We all hear about failing. How many of you hear it's okay to fail? How many of you heard that? Fucking raise your goddamn hands. That's what this whole thing is about. It's okay to fail, all right? Do you guys think it's okay to fail? Yeah. Think it's okay to fail? I don't either. I think it's bullshit, all right? I think it's total bullshit. Why? Is it okay to fail in this situation when you go to in so soccer, football, whatever the hell sport this is? Sorry. Is it okay to fail here? No, right? Your computer. Is it okay when your computer fails? No, it's not. Guess what? When you're performing brain surgery, you think it's okay to screw up here? No, right? Or what about this? I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, if I would have came home with one of these, I wouldn't be up here talking to you today. All right? What? Listen to the rest of the story. <laughs> okay? But it's not really okay to fail, okay? So why is it okay to fail in your business? Why? I don't really think it's okay to fail in your business, okay? Most people don't fail. They succeed at being lazy, okay? You wanna start something, you've gotta finish. Because being an entrepreneur, guys, it's freaking hard. Failing, that's easy. That's the easy part, failing, okay? So what is okay about failure? It happens, okay? Great. What's okay with failure? It's not about failure. It's about making mistakes, all right? You make mistakes, okay? You screw up. Everyone does. It happens. And what is good, what's good about mistakes? You learn from them. Very good. So make all the mistakes you want. Don't aspire to failure. Don't get that F on your chest. Try not to. Study, work hard, and try to get an A, all right? Finally, not finally, I'm keeping on. Oh, what time is it? Okay, <clears throat> be yourself. This is very important. I've spent many years trying to figure out myself, okay? Many years where you don't like yourself sometimes, or you're trying to be someone else you're not. Because at the bottom of the day, every, at the end of the day, every single person, you want to be liked, right? You want people to like you. Do you want people to hate you or think you're ugly or, or think you're dumb or you're not funny, things like that? No, okay? But the reality of it is not everyone's going to like you, all right? That's unfortunate. However, you've got a better chance if you be yourself. And, of course, don't be a dick. Right now, you're in a stage of learning and making mistakes, a constant stage. We all are. So why should you complicate it by being disingenuous? People like transparency. People like honesty. People will like you better. All your mistakes and faults, it doesn't matter. Put them out there. Let other people decide. And you'll feel better about yourself at the end of the day. 
So feedback is super duper important, okay? You wanna be open to feedback as possible and ask for it often. And sometimes, guys, you're gonna get some feedback that makes you wanna cry to your mom, all right? It's really gonna be tough some days, and that's okay. Take it in, don't beat yourself up about it, and learn from it, all right? And then also on the flip side, when you're giving people feedback, Try to be as honest as possible. Some people, unfortunately, can't take feedback, but make sure your feedback is constructive, all right, and it helps them. The reason you give feedback is to help someone else, not to make yourself feel better about yourself, okay? So what do you do when you get all that feedback? That's right, guys. You've got to be introspective. You've got to analyze yourself with this feedback because you need to improve and challenge yourself to changing and growing, right? So... There is no right and no wrong. You get it. Everything I've been saying are based upon my experiences. It's what, wor what works for me and has worked. And I'm constantly changing it up, too, because I'm constantly learning, right? So there's no right or wrong way. Whatever makes you feel good as a person and gets you further in your life and in your business. Because at the end of the day, if you're in business, your goal is to love your business, all right? Because in your world of business, you come first. The entrepreneur comes first. So next, I'm going to give you guys a list of books to read that have helped me out in my career. And I think they're really important uh, no matter what stage of your career you're in. You should read them now. One of the first books is um, How to Win Friends and Influence People, Dale Carnegie. Does anyone know this book? Have you read it? All right, good job. So this book is a classic. This guy wrote this book in the 1970s, all right? He's a business guru, a self-help, self-improvement person. And this book teaches you basically how not to be a dick. So you, I'm gonna buy you a copy, okay? So second book is uh, How to Get Rich, One of the World's Greatest Entrepreneurs Shares His Secrets. This is Felix Dennis. Does anyone know who Felix Dennis is? Are you from the UK? Okay, Felix Dennis is uh, from the United Kingdom. He is uh, head of Dennis Publishing, one of the largest publishers in the UK, if not the entire world. Um, he did Maxim, uh, Personal Computer World, uh, The Week, things like that. And you know how he started? He actually started because he created a Bruce Lee fanzine. And you know what? He didn't give a shit about Bruce Lee. He just saw an opening in the marketplace for it. And this guy bootstrapped his entire business. This guy is a multi, multi millionaire. I think he's even a billionaire. So his book, actually, more importantly, is not really how to get rich. It talks about why you don't want to be rich. Okay? Very important book. The guy's brilliant. Uh, third book is Spent Sex, Evolution, and Consumer Behavior by Jeffrey Miller. Anyone read that? Wow, okay, you guys have, bit, we get it, dick, right? <laughs> okay, so we get it. So my whole presentation is maybe about psychology. And this is really important, because if you want to sell to people, you got to understand people. And this is what this book will teach you about, all right? I recommend you read it if you're doing business. Fine, uh, next book is Rework, Jason Fried and David Heinemeyer Hansen. Has anyone read that book? Do you know who Jason Fried is? You guys know him? 37 Signals, Base Camp. So this book is great because uh, it's about entrepreneurs and basically it tells you, don't give a fuck. You just do what you're gonna do. You don't care about what anyone else says. You just do your thing. Great book, it's really short. Definitely read it. Uh, Delivering Happiness, Tony Shea, the Zappos guy. This guy's brilliant. He is the father of e-commerce, and he's a really great guy. His book is littered with Winnie the Pooh quotes. I don't know if any of you are familiar with A.A. A. Milne. It's a wonderful philosopher, actually. You should read it. Wonderful book. Uh, don't Make Me Think by Steve, Shru uh, Steve Krug. Has, does anyone know that book? Okay. What about anybody else? Because even if you're not doing UX, UI design, I think this applies uh, to all aspects of your business because basically people really don't, like I said before, people don't care. They want to know what's in it for them. So you need to hand things to people on a silver platter. This book teaches you how. All right, and finally, I have a lot of time, but damn it, okay. <laughs> I'm done right now, and 
what I want to talk to you guys about is feedback and homework. Like I said before, I'm really big on feedback. And if you guys have time, please take that URL down. If you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them as well. Uh, give me some feedback. And then your homework. OK, you guys have homework. I really want you guys to challenge yourself. So go home, OK? Write 10 ways you'll challenge yourself. And if you don't know where to start, just take 10 things you hate, OK? 10 things you hate to do and research how you can find out to engage in those things. And then that's it. Please follow me on Twitter. And if you have any questions, I'm here for another very long time. That was quick. Yes. All right, does anyone have any questions? Please have questions, because I have a lot of time. Yes. The books, sure. You could take a picture with your uh, phone. That would work, too. OK, you got it? Everybody got it? Sure. Why did I choose Japan? Um, good question. The reason I chose Japan is as a child, I was passionate about Japan and Japanese animation. So my passion did lead me there. So passion is bullshit because it didn't teach me to start my business. Okay, the reason I started my business was I loved Japan. And I got there, and I was like, OK, I love Japan. What big deal? Nobody gave a crap that I loved Japan, right? Big deal. And so I saw an opening in the marketplace, which was selling Japanese products to all over the world. And then, bam, that's why. OK, questions, please. God, questions. We have a lot of time. Go. <laughs> Two-part question. Do you have employees? Yeah, 16. How do you brainwash them into your way of thinking? <laughs> uh, nice. I'm very scary, OK? And also, I cut their checks. So <laughs> Japan, I have Japanese employees, and I have American employees, and then I have some European employees as well. And each one of them has a different mindset and the way they work. It's, it's just a process. It's, it's making mistakes and figuring it out and iterating how you work with all of them, so. But no, they don't think like I do. I mean, they, they, they have their own minds. They're not robots, unless they get out of line, you know? <laughs> all right, I think I, we have 10 minutes left. Um. Thank you. Um, so I like your philosophy, the whole not being a dick. Yeah. Uh, but I've met a, a ton of successful entrepreneurs over the years, and a lot of them are dicks. And I would argue that some of the <coughs> some of them actually became successful uh, because of the fact that they are dicks. So would you say that there are some qualities uh, that a successful entrepreneur has to possess that are ne not necessarily likable qualities? Yeah, totally. I mean, I agree. Like, look at Steve Jobs. He was probably the biggest dick of the century, right? I mean, it just depends. But, you know, the percentage of people that are successful that aren't dicks are probably higher. You're just... It, you're just hearing the media talk about all these special cases, which become interesting to the media because they are dicks. So people just showcase the dicks is what I think. Honestly, I know a, a lot, a lot of successful people that aren't dicks. But you can be whatever you want. At the end of the day, my presentation is about just being yourself. And if you happen to be a dick, that's fine. I'm not going to be your friend, you know, but... Have you personally have to, uh, have you ever had to be addicted to someone to sure. advance in your business? Sure, sure, because you know why? Um, it was a process of me learning uh, how to do business, actually. There's so many different ways that you can be, and being a dick is one of them. So d is that successful? Does that work? But it didn't work for me, so I had to pull back and not be a dick anymore. So, so you have to pull back Pull back dick. in. I had to pull out. <laughs> God, that's being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> ah, all right. Okay, guys. I think we're done, right? We're good. All right. Anybody buying me a beer? No? Okay. We're dicks. You dicks. <laughs> okay, guys. Thank you. <laughs>